Hello everyone. In this part of the presentation, we are going to see in detail about pulp protection. We have already completed the initial stage of tooth preparation and in the final stage, we finish the removal of any infected dentin or old restorative material. The step 6 in the steps in tooth preparation is the pulp protection if indicated. So let's see in detail about this pulp protection. In this, we are going to see the presentation in two categories. First part, we will be seeing about why we have to protect the dental pulp. And in the second part, we are going to see how we are going to protect the dental pulp, the technique which are used for protecting the dental pulp. Before going into that, we should know why we have to protect the pulp. Because we know that pulp is a soft tissue which is hiding a inside the hard casing of enamel and dentin. At any cost, the pulp have to be protected from many of the insults which could happen at the time of tooth preparation or which could have happened because of the decay. The, the, the common reasons for uh, the problems or the irritations or the assaults that could happen in the dental pulp include one, the heat generated by the rotary instruments. Next, the some of the ingredients of the various restorative materials, thermal changes that are conducted through the metallic restorative materials, forces transmitted through the materials to the dentin, the galvanic shock which can arise and also the ingress of noxious products and bacteria through micro leakage. All these different assaults or this irritation which could happen to the pulp, let's see in detail one by one. First, the heat generated by the rotary instrument. We all know that while using an aerotor for caries removal, the burr will be rotating around a speed of around uh, 2 lakh rotations per minute or maybe at the time of using a micro uh, micro motor without a water coolant the burr will be rotating at a speed of around 25,000 rotations per minute this speed of this rotation of this rotary instruments can generate a lot of heat this heat if it is conducted through the remaining dentin to the dental pulp which is a soft tissue which will get damaged so at any cost we should prevent or minimize so the one damage one source of way that the pulp could get damaged is heat which is produced by this rotary instruments the second way that the pulp could get damaged or affected is because of the some of the ingredients from restorative materials like for example the zinc phosphate have the phosphoric acid and the glycinomer cement, the polyacrylic acid, and the amalgam from the dental amalgam, sorry, the mercury from the dental amalgam, all these chemicals can cause some damage to the dental pulp if they can penetrate through the dentinal tubules. We can consider that GAC among this list may be a better material because of the uh, the molecular size of the polyacrylic acid is little bigger but still when in very deep cavities if there is no other source of pulp protection used even glycinomer cement the polyacrylic acid from the glycinomer liquid can cause problems next the thermal change which are conducted through the restorations for example if you are using a metallic restoration like direct filling gold restoration the amalgam restoration the cast metal restorations all these are metallic restorations. These, me these restorations can conduct heat through the restorations. So pulp being a very sensitive tissue to the thermal changes, it can easily get affected. So whenever you are doing a restoration with a metallic material, and if the remaining dentin thickness is not that adequate, maybe which is less than around 1.5 millimeter, then it is mandatory that we have to protect the pulp. The other reason is the force which is transmitted through the restoration. Let's keep that there is a restoration which we have done in the tooth and whenever we are occluding during the masticatory load the forces will be transmitted through the restoration to the nearby tissues and maybe the dentin takes up most of the load but still some of the load can get passed to the dental pulp through through this these forces can cause some form of damage to the dental pulp
and next comes the galvanic shock so if you are taking two dissimilar metals for example a gold restoration and an amalgam restoration ionically they are different once they come in contact the electropositive and the electronegative uh, photon uh, the uh, electrons uh, the ionic exchange can take place between these metallic restorations. Once these dissimilar ions comes in contact, there can be a flow of electrons from one of the restoration to the other. This can cause uh, the patient will feel it as a sudden jerk of pain or a jolt of pain and which can be quite severe. So in order to prevent this or to minimize this, we have to do or keep or protect the pulp with a non-metallic restorative material as a base. And the finally, we have got this micro leakage, which is very, very common with uh, composite restorations. When the composites are cured, the, because of the polymerization, the restoration shrinks. Once it shrinks, there can be a gap which is formed between the tooth and the restoration. Once this happens, there can be an ingress of bacteria or the fluid which can happen and this can lead to uh, some form of uh, damages to the dental pulp. This can also cause lead to a secondary caries formation, a sensitivity, uh, or it can cause the marginal discoloration, marginal deterioration, and finally the pulpal damage. So in order to prevent from all these things, we have to protect the dental pulp. Now, let's move on to the second part. So we have known that what are the reasons that the dental pulp could damage, what are the irritation, the sources of insult. Now, the second part, it is it is the dentist while doing restoration should protect the dental pulp. How are we going to protect the dental pulp? For protecting the dental pulp from all these insults, we have the following one, the bases, the liners, the dental varnish, the root, the sealers, and also the dentin adhesives. Let's see one by one. First, let's see about the base. What is a base? It is a material which is placed around 0.5 to 0.75 millimeter, can extend up to one millimeter in the bottom of the cavity preparation. So in order to protect the dental pulp. So um, um, after applying the dental base, then we will do the restoration. So that provides a thermal insulation an electrical insulation and also mechanical protection. The common examples of the good ideal bases are the zinc phosphate, which is often recommended under amalgam restoration because it gets the initial setting very faster and the initial strength will be too high. So we prefer zinc phosphate under amalgam. Then we can go for the zinc polycarboxylate. Zinc oxide eugenol, which is a low strength base, which is not often recommended as a base. And we can go zinc oxide, uh, zinc oxide eugenol as a sub base. And on top of that, we can go for a much more stronger base like zinc phosphate or zinc, zinc polycarboxylate. Then we can go for the restoration. Then comes the glass enomer and also the resin modified glass enomer cement. These two are ideal bases under composite restorations. So we can choose, depending upon the type of the restorative material we are using, we can choose a base whenever the thickness of the remaining dentine is less than maybe less than two millimeters we can go for a base next come the liners the liners are thin materials or thin layers of material which are applied in the bottom of the tooth preparation and on top of that we have we can apply a base so this liners uh, the liners ha uh, have the ability to reduce the dentin perme permeability, that is the conduction of these chemicals by through the dentinal tubules. Then they are and they have antibacterial agents, and some of the uh, liners are fluoride releasing agents. Always keep in mind, liner should never be applied over the cavity margins. It's applied only on the floor. It is not applied on the walls or towards the margins because most of the uh, liners are uh, water soluble and once the liner gets dissolved that may affect the marginal seal so liner should not be applied so the common liners are the calcium hydroxide and the glass enamel cement so calcium hydroxide provide a very high alkalinity and also the glass enamel cement which provides some form of protection 
Next come the varnishes. So the varnishes are applied uh, and on top of that we can do the restorations. Keep it in mind, varnishes will seal the dentinal tubules and the most common example is a copal resin. Varnishes are often indicated under amalgam restorations and varnishes should be never applied under a glycinomer cement restorations because which bonds to the tooth by chemical addition or again we should never apply a varnish below a composite restoration which undergoes a micromechanical bonding with the tooth. So often it is recommended only under a amalgam restoration. So this can prevent the discoloration of the tooth caused by dental amalgam and it also can uh, provide an initial a good marginal seal for dental amalgam restoration. So there is something, there are a group of materials which are called the sealers, which are applied over the fresh cavity preparations or tooth preparation. They act as a desensitizing agents and they are uh, they are also antibacterial agents. The common examples are glutaraldehyde, uh, 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 hema, that is hydroxyethyl methacrylate, then benzalkanium chloride and chlorhexidine. They can be applied. For example, the, these agents will provide a desensitizing effect uh, and especially whenever you are going for some deep caries uh, or maybe in some cervical abrasions, we can go for this procedure so that we can minimize the post-operative sensitivity. And finally, we, we can see about the dendin adhesives, which are not the, the dendin bonding agents. And this is commonly we practice below the uh, any restoration which bonds, for example, a composite restoration. It, it seals the dendinal tubules and it provides bonding. All dendin bonding agents are adhesives, which, which are used for bonding a composite restoration act as a uh, protective agent also. So thus we have seen about what are the ways that the pulp get infected or affected uh, by the different assaults while tooth preparation and so it is essential uh, that we have to protect the dental pulp and we have seen about the different strategies like the bases, the liners, the cavity varnishes and all those the different strategies for protecting the dental pulp from the assaults of the restorative materials. Let's see the next part in the coming video. Stay tuned.